Hey guys, it's Cynthia and welcome back to my studio. We're going to be injecting a little fantasy into our portrait study today because the model in the reference photo that I shot for this was wearing full plate armor, which is pretty cool stuff. Now I'm set up with my tinted gessoed hardboard panel. I'm using my typical palette for studies that I'll post up on the screen for you and for my medium as ever. I'll be using the ethereal lubricant known as Liquin. So now that I'm recording this, I've had a chance to go back and read all the comments on my last couple of videos. And I wanted to give a quick thank you to everyone who left feedback. I really appreciate it. And you guys are awesome. Um, it's wonderful to hear that the time-lapse chats are going over well. I'm having a lot of fun doing them and I'm looking forward to keeping these rolling. And I also have another couple of videos in the works, um, something a little different. One of them is taking me like a month to edit, <laughs> which I think will be worth it in the end, but we'll see. I also saw some comments asking about digital painting, which is something that I'm definitely going to be doing soon. I'm in the process of figuring out my setup right now, just kind of getting the logistics settled for how to record my voice with a good microphone and what's on the screen at the same time, because I would love to do some recording while I'm actually working so that I can talk about my process in real time. So looking forward to recording those for you very soon. And speaking of digital art, in my last video, I talked about how I was interested in doing kind of a revisit to one of my old pieces. And guys, I totally found the one. <laughs> I found the piece that I want to do. It's an old digital piece from 2007. And I think it was on like my inaugural DeviantArt page. So it's appropriately terrible and wonderful at the same time. And I'm really looking forward to recording that one for you. I saw another comment asking about uh, whether or not I could post the reference photos for these studies that I'm working on. And I think that is something that I'd like to do in the future. There are some things to be considered like model release forms or the agreements that I have with certain models that I've shot. Um, I always want to try to be respectful of whether or not people actually want their photos being posted. You might say that uh, what makes a good art reference and what makes a good glamour shot are not necessarily the same thing. So um, I just have to make sure it's okay first or um, find subjects that I know are, are okay to post up. And honestly, when I'm doing studies like this, I'm not always aiming for a perfect facsimile of a photograph. I mean, I always have some kind of goal in mind and accuracy is a perfectly fine goal, but for example, my goal for the study today is capturing the essence of this model's amazing expression. It excites me how much life and emotion and experience it looks like there is, even just in his eyes. And my headcanon about this, this picture is that this is the moment before a really intense battle and he's preparing himself and sort of mentally reviewing all of the things that he has to lose if he gets struck down in combat and like i've got this whole story made up in my head <laughs> and being successful in capturing that is more important to me right now than making a perfect copy so this was actually shot during a group photo shoot. Um, some other artist friends and I pulled together some money to hire both this gentleman and another female model who dressed up as a sorceress. It was really cool. She had an awesome cloak and some daggers and things like that. And all of us together shot them in a bunch of different scenarios. Like we had them fighting each other, casting magic and some sword shots and, and some love scenes, like depending on what the other artists needed for their projects, we got a bunch of different takes. So me being who I am, I of course went for something quieter and more emotional. <laughs> um, and I had asked this gentleman to give me a range of different 
intense facial expressions. Like there were some where he was angry, there were some where he was um, sort of had his eyes closed and was tilting his head back, you know, just, just a variety of different things to play around with. And this shot really, this was a great capture because I, I thought, you know, I'd asked him to look pained and he really pulled it off. But in reality, he was genuinely fatigued from the photo shoot after wearing plate armor for like two hours. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for him for coming out and doing this for us, but um, the expression is so genuine and that's what I want to capture about it. So as I was working on this and making up stories about who this person would be as a character and thinking about preparing for battle and, and fear and where courage comes from and all that, I had also been reading some comments from you guys about uh, trying to get around fear or being courageous enough to start something new or try a new medium or work on a new piece. And that really inspired me to want to talk about that today as my topic. I don't think there's a single artist that I've met, myself included, who hasn't struggled with fear at some point. When it comes to art, trying something new or stepping out of your comfort zone or uh, dealing with feelings of competition and judgment and things like that can be really harrowing. And finding that place of bravery within ourselves can be a struggle. So I want to start off with a little story. And this is a personal story and doesn't have to do with art right away, but stick with it because I'll get back there. For a long time, I had bad driving anxiety after getting into an accident. And this was to the point that I would be shaking and crying behind the wheel, sometimes even before I turned the engine on, because I knew deep within my soul that everyone on the road was just out to kill me. <laughs> like, people specifically woke up in the morning and got in their vehicles so they could murder me on the road. That was my mentality behind driving. And... I knew that if I made it to the store, or if I made it to work in one piece, that I was just lucky, and somehow had just cheated death, and it would happen to me the next time. Until one day, I met a young woman who had it worse than I did. She was shaking and crying even before getting into the car. <laughs> And I mean, I, I at least made it behind the wheel, so I mean, that felt like a big accomplishment in comparison. But I found myself giving her support. And when talking to her about her anxiety, I started rattling off like, it'll be okay, you have control over your vehicle, all these things that other people had told me, as though I had no problem at all, like I was some kind of automotive Superman. And then the same thing happened to me on an airplane. Because of course I was also afraid to fly because all planes were defective and they would all end up at the bottom of the ocean. And the only way around that was to just white knuckle your way through the flight until you got to the destination. And I was sitting next to a friend on the way to a convention who was terrified, like way worse than I had it. And in the same way, I started spouting information about turbulence and mortality statistics and the noises that the plane makes when the flaps open for landing. Like all of a sudden I'm a flying expert. And it's interesting how when you're faced with someone who has more fear than you do, how you say things to them that you need to hear yourself. So I kind of internalized those experiences and realized that if I was having fear or insecurity about something, that I could use mentorship and teaching and giving support to others as a way to vocalize and reinforce some of the things that I needed to understand. And I think the same thing applies to painting. Now, I'm comforted by the fact every day that if I do a bad painting, it's not going to kill me. <laughs> I mean, most likely not. I probably shouldn't think on that too hard. <laughs> but my point is that chances are you know someone who's more fearful or insecure about painting than you are. And when you find that person, maybe it's a child or a younger sibling or even a friend or another artist that you know, when you find them, encourage them. Teach them what you know. 
which may not feel like much all the time, but you'd be surprised how much information you have stored away in your head that you're not confident about. And your confidence slowly builds when you realize you're demonstrating and giving back all this great stuff you know to a captive audience who needs it even more than you do. And when you talk to someone who's afraid of painting, you might find that some of your own excuses and faulty reasoning that you've been using to stop yourself are echoed back in the other person's words. And outside of the echo chamber that is your own head, it can almost sound ridiculous. Now, collaboration is a great tool for a lot of reasons, and it can go both ways. Like, being a mentor can help reinforce those things back to you, but also finding a mentor. You know, one of the best things that I did for my career for a lot of reasons, but certainly to build confidence, was join a critique group. And this was just a group of friends that I'd met through an art convention, and we lived all over the world. I mean, we certainly weren't next to each other working all the time, but it was really a good way to get a better feedback loop than the one inside my own head <laughs> and build my confidence by talking to others. You know, the most important thing is getting a variety of inputs, making sure that your own discouraging inner voice is not the only one that you hear all the time. So teaching others is great and having a network is awesome, but I'll tell you my favorite solution to feeling insecurity is jumping straight into the lion's mouth. I like to paint my problems. And sometimes through the course of doing a painting about something that I'm feeling insecure about, I learn more about the source of that problem. So if you're feeling fear about art, I would ask you to try to identify what the source is and try to paint that. Paint what it is you're afraid of. Now, it doesn't have to be a literal interpretation. Like, if you're afraid of judgment from your friends or other artists, you don't literally have to paint a picture of a judgmental audience, right? Think of a representation of the feeling of being judged. Is it a forest made of eyes? Is it a self-portrait in a spotlight? What, what does being judged look like to you? If you're afraid you won't stand out among competition, maybe you're silhouetted against some huge shape that's making you look tiny in comparison. Like whatever it is, give yourself the challenge to represent that antagonistic force in some kind of a narrative way. The worst that can happen is you make an image that you don't want to share with anyone. And that's okay, because you are not alone. No artist is immune to that at all, <laughs> myself very much included. Now I've had a lot of time to work on my driving and flying anxiety, but there are still a lot of things out there that get me. And the big one right now, I would have to say, is my fear of public speaking. This is something that's followed me throughout my entire life. In fifth grade, I passed out during a spelling bee because of, you know, a cafeteria-sized audience looking at me. It was horrible. And I've had so many experiences like that since where I've just tightened up and gotten a stomach ache every time I have to go talk in front of people. And I've been working on it, but I would love at some point to do a painting about fear of public speaking. Just use that as my concept. And maybe I would paint an aspirational hero like, like this guy, you know, getting himself ready for war <laughs> or some kind of representational scenario like that. So I'm going to wrap this up for today, and I hope that you're all feeling more confident and inspired to go start your own projects. You know, you're not alone and you're never going to stop feeling fear at certain times, but it sometimes just means that you're pushing yourself harder, and that's a good thing. So try to stick with it, be with the fear, and use it to your advantage wherever you can. Now this study's been through a lot of push and pull while I've been talking. I actually almost kind of lost it there in the middle, but I think we recovered okay. And I am out of coffee, so I'm gonna go grab another cup and maybe start on another painting, and hopefully I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.